Welcome to the first Irish expat podcast. In today's episode, we'll be covering the first city we visited on our trip across Italy, Naples. We'll be chatting about why we chose Naples, expectations versus reality, transport, accommodation, food and fun, value for money, and some overall tips if you're planning on visiting Naples or the south of Italy. Hi, I'm Jane. And I'm Cormac. And welcome to the Irish Expat Podcast. We've been on the road for six months, traveling the lengths and breadths of Italy. Season one is all about our six week holiday from the southern city of Naples to Lake Garda up in the north. We'll be giving our best tips and tricks and talking about our highlights and mistakes. And how we've ended up moving to Florence. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you like this episode, then please give us a five star rating. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Alt Living and find more about us at altliving.com. So hello, Cormac. Hello there. So this is our official kind of episode one. Number one. Our, numero uno. Numero uno, our destination numero uno, yes. which is Naples. Naples. We so love Naples. We love Naples. And we're very sorry if Cormac is slightly distracted in this episode as the Chelsea game is on. So he has that on at the background. <laughs> I don't know if they need to know that. But <laughs> <laughs> we're very professional here at the podcast studio. I'm smoking a cigarette watching the game. I'm doing a podcast. Yes. It's Italian life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many times have we been to Naples now? Twice now. Twice. And we stopped through it one other well, time. Well, yeah, we stopped through it for a few hours. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so on all of our, we had an intro episode, which you can go and listen to, which is kind of our unofficial episode one, which is why we chose to go to Italy and why we ended up moving here and our budgets and everything. But um, in this episode, we're going to focus solely on Naples and we're going to go through transport, accommodation, food, fun, value for money, and then some extra info overall experience. Uh, we're going to vote out of 10 in each of these categories. Yeah. And then we'll give our overall score out of 100. So we'll do this for all cities. And best yeah, we can. best we can. And hopefully yeah, we'll make a little scoreboard then mm. at the end of season one about our favorite places episode which you can go and listen to which is kind of our unofficial episode one which is why we chose to go to Italy and why we ended up moving here and our budgets and everything but um in this episode we're going to focus solely on Naples and we're going to go through transport accommodation food fun value for money and then some extra info overall experience uh we're going to vote out of 10 in each of these categories yeah and then we'll give our overall score out of 100. So we'll do this for all cities. And best yeah, we can. best we can. And hopefully yeah, we'll make a little scoreboard then mm. at the end of season one about our favorite places. So the first thing we just wanted to touch on was expectations versus reality um, and why we chose Naples. So why did we choose Naples as the number one destination? Well, I suppose it was, you know, the, the flights into the city were the cheapest out of that was literally it that yeah. was our <laughs> that was it i don't know why i've even found a sugar it was the cheapest flight we could get yes. we were like that's for far enough south that if we went north from there we could cover like most major cities yes so you were due to go to turin up in the yeah. north at the end of the holiday so i guess it just kind of made sense to fly into the south and, and travel the holiday there yeah but no we literally just chose naples because it was the cheapest to fly into so remember that. <laughs> yes. Um, we got flights from Dublin Airport into Naples and the flights in total were 66 euro. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 66 seems to be kind of a running theme actually because it it's our average holiday, or it's our average hotel price across the whole. Average daily spend. It's our, yeah. The, yeah, 66 seems to always come up. <laughs> oh, yeah, bizarre. So we chose Naples essentially because it was the cheapest to fly into. Yeah. Um, we also knew that we definitely wanted to visit the Amalfi Coast. And so if anybody is thinking about visiting the Amalfi Coast, they, they generally have to fly into Naples, don't they? Yeah, there's no other, no other other towns like Salerno and everything. They don't really have any airports. So yeah. Naples is your, your center base. And from the Girobaldi train station, you can get to yeah. everywhere. So we do just want to touch on, um, we had heard some negative things about Naples. And so we just used it as a stopgap, really, to get to the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. Um, but I think we just want to talk about those expectations versus reality a little bit. People say that it's quite high in terms of crime and that it's not a very nice city. Um, I have a mix of friends who've visited Naples before and half have loved it and half have really, really disliked it. It's a so, very 50-50 place. 
in the terms of like people's opinions on it. Yeah. So do you want to give a little context about maybe your expectations of Naples versus reality? Yeah, I knew that Naples was, you know, a vast metropolitan city, kind of grimy, like Maradona footballer came from there and the streets were always stark and tight and small and lifestyle was crazy. So I, you know, I thought it was going to be absolutely kind of mental, Mm -hmm. uh, dirty and dystopian and kind of not, not like violent in any way, but anyone we told or any of my friends, I have a friend from Salerno as well, just outside of Naples. He said the first thing, mind your handbag, tell Jay, don't, you Mm -hmm. know, don't have a purse out on a table and all this stuff and watch your pockets at train stations. But so the expectation for me personally was it was going to be kind of a rough and fast paced, yeah. ready to go city. That's just like a violent, but intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was that in fairness, but it wasn't as the reality of it was for me, wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Yeah. And so did you, in, overall, did you enjoy Naples? I love Naples. Yeah. It, the, yeah. The lifestyle is crazy. Fast paced. Just people are like, you know, <laughs> the hell out of my way. I'm doing my thing. You know, it just, yeah. Bye bye bye, as they say over here. Like it's just go go go, <laughs> yeah, uh, all the time, which I love because it's just chaos, controlled chaos, controlled, controlled chaos. chaos. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't know if there's much controlling. <laughs> so my um expectation was I actually knew a girl who is from Naples originally, and I was chatting to her maybe two days before we flew out, and so she just said you know, stay away from the Spanish quarter by yourself. If you're a girl walking on your own, don't walk late at night by yourself. Don't leave your phone out on the table, even if yeah. you're having dinner, things like that. Just essentially keep your wits about you. Yeah, it's a lot just kind of common sense, you know, don't go down the dark alleyway in the yeah. corner to skip to the next street. Don't, you know, have your wallet sticking out of your, your yeah. jeans or wear ultra designer clothes and, you know, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, common, 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 sense. common sense. I have to say... I absolutely loved Naples. I love revisiting it. I think it's a mad place. It's a great party <laughs> town. If you were yeah. thinking of going there for a stag or a hen, oh, or if you're it's very cheap, it's and they very crack cheap. Crack is nineties all the time. Yeah, I think if you're a young couple and you're looking for a mad weekend and you don't want to do kind of Malaga or Ibiza or something like that, yeah. I think Naples is kind of a really cool alternative to go there. Yeah. Um. I will say, I when we first landed, and again, we, we were just using it as a stopgap, kind of, and I wish that we had had more time um, because it was so fun, but it is absolutely filthy. Yeah. Like, I know I heard somebody was there a couple of months back and even the bin people have been on strike, so I can't imagine <laughs> what it was like then. Yeah, um, they weren't on strike when we were there and it stank. Yeah, it did but that's you know it's silly to say but it's kind of part of the charm it is rough and ready take what you want it kind of reminds yeah. me like i feel like it's the most it's a western city but it feels almost eastern in some places like there's tuk tuk mopeds know, yeah take it or fucking leave it from the yeah. italian point of view where it's just like you know this is us we're not changing for tourists you either come in and enjoy it or you yeah. know there's a train station go to the next pretty tourist city yeah um, and I did, I found the people really welcoming, to be honest. They were so lovely. Um, really nice. So, yeah, I just wanted to set that up at the very beginning where some people might have an expectation of Naples and they might say, mm. oh, I've heard it's really dangerous. Or I've heard about it. Well, we didn't get robbed when we've been there a couple of times now. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? I actually didn't feel unsafe. Um, no, it had, a, it had a nice like atmosphere, vibe to it. And I think we were looking in the sense the areas we were in were really good. Like I imagine obviously there's some, as in every city, there's some areas where you don't want to be by yourself and yeah. you know, more local areas where it's you know, corruption and all that. Southern Italia is famous Absolutely, for. yeah. But where we were, like Spanish border especially, that was always mentioned to us as like a kind of a no-go by yourself. But so relaxed sitting on the streets of a thousand people drinking one euro beers yeah great fun yeah just um, amazing fun but yeah i would just i would just recommend as a woman maybe it's i i would recommend going with somebody else whether it's another female friend or um a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever i would just recommend going in more more than just, i wouldn't recommend it for solo travel as a woman no. let's put it that way but let's move into the actual categories now we just had to get that one out of the way um, so the first one is transport. So obviously the first piece of transport we got was the flight. Um, so that was, we got Ryanair. 
because it's the cheapest and Ooh, and not the best. <laughs> not the best. We we're pretty cheap. We only brought two 10 kg bags with us yeah. for the whole trip. And well, do you want to just touch on it for a brief 30 seconds about the flight? Yeah, just uh, we won't go into detail, but basically three hour flight. We were delayed, I think, an hour taking off. So everyone on the flight ordered food. And that meant that you couldn't even get a single drink. No, which I've never, ever seen before never in a Ryanair seen. flight. So many people ordered food that the, all the students were gone. Cooking in the back and like a, one of the microwaves was broken. So it was just like all they did was food. And by the time we landed, I, half the people didn't even get drinks, food, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So they so said that, that was... they, they couldn't start the bar cart or like the, the kind of regular food cart until all the hot food was done. Yeah. And it took them half the flight to get that done. And then the other half of the flight to charge everyone yeah <laughs> and then get ready for landing so we were unlucky so but we were obviously we landed into naples later than expected then because of the flight delays and then we were no drinks no food anything on the plane yeah so we were so, unlucky in that sense but yeah so and just so that everyone knows we do have a link um on our website altliving.com so you can download our six-week guide and it literally has every single piece of transport accommodation flights ev- like everything that we did um, fun like restaurants bars every place that we visited is in that guide and um, so if you do want to download it and take a look it is totally free so um feel free to have a browse through there but we landed into the airport and i had realized that they actually have free now in naples which yeah. um they don't have in most places in italy but free now we also use in ireland because uber is banned mm. So, um, yeah, we decided that we were going to take a free now from the airport, which did also not, it didn't work. No, we, la- we, we landed outside the airport, you know, had our, had our cigarette. We're like, okay, we'll get a taxi. And there was about 700 taxis. Every single driver was out of their taxi, screaming at each other. <laughs> it was really an it intro. Was, <laughs> it was a really an intro. Proper Italian guys going at each other. Like, ah, cazzo. We were like, where do we go? And they were all white taxis. So everyone was coming down the road. Didn't know which one it was. Yeah, the free now sticker just, wasn't presented yeah. on the taxi. So. <laughs> so it was just like, it was a little bit messy to get going. It was. but So we ordered a free now. They um picked up. They were going to come to the airport. They couldn't find us. We couldn't find them. They cancelled. We ended up getting charged five euro. Same thing happened. We ordered a second taxi. Same thing happened. So we were down a tenner already before we left the airport and nobody was picking us up. Mm. So at that stage, we literally just decided to jump in a cab because yeah. we said, you know, we're, we're not waiting around here. So we'll just recommend don't even bother with free now. Jump in the taxis. We learned after Especially at the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bother just um, getting the queue. And... Yeah. And we learned after our second trip to Naples because we were really worried about spending money. And so we were like, oh, taxis, we heard are really expensive in Italy, which they are in most places. But in Naples, they're so dirt cheap. Very affordable. Get a taxi in Naples if you're there. It is much cheaper than Florence, much cheaper than Rome. You can get across the city in Naples. Like, I'd say a good, more than half of the city for eight euro for yeah. two people. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we, we did a solid 15, 15 minutes driving, at least 20 minutes driving. And it was, I think it was, yeah. Maybe eight euro. Yeah, it was less. It was less. Th- we got change back from a tenner. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I would just yeah, even for a night out or something, if you're like, oh, will I walk or get a taxi? Just get a cab. It's yeah. just jump in it. They're not gonna. They're not gonna rob you. And even if they're factoring in that you're a tourist or anything like that, they they really won't charge yeah. you a lot. Um. Also, just on that, a little note is that um, in the taxis they have a little sign and they say that they can drive you to Sorrento or Salerno for like a hundred euro. Um, if you did have a load of luggage or if you did whatever, or if it was a larger taxi and you had a family, maybe this would be an option for you. Mm. Um, I would actually definitely recommend it for families if, if they had four suitcases and four of them and, That's you know, a hundred quid is fine. You know, a lot of the trains, um, if you don't book them in advance, they can cost up to 90, hundred euro to get to different locations. So yeah, but not to the Amalfi coast, which we found. So yeah. we actually got to the Amalfi coast in total for seven euro, um, <laughs> which was great. So just bear in mind that the trains are really, really cheap. Um, but if you, if you have the money to spend and you're, you're not arsed trying to walk around finding the train mm. station or anything like that, um, then jump in a cab. And then the final thing that I just wanted to touch on with transport was the actual train station itself. Um, it can be a little bit confusing because it's there's a Garibaldi station and then there's Naples train station. They are the same thing. Just yeah. just go. Garibaldi is kind of this 
strange, big looking, almost looks like a shopping center. Just keep walking. It'll bring you straight into Naples train station. It's just an underground entrance to the main station that goes underneath the main roads where all the taxis park up above outside the station. We were very confused because on some tickets it said Garibaldi, on some tickets it said Naples train station. It's the same thing. So, yes. so the next thing we're going to talk about is our accommodation. Do, do, do. Um, We booked our accommodation city centre about a mile away from the Spanish Quarter. So it was a little bit of a walk. I would recommend <laughs> if you did want to go party party to book it somewhere closer to the Spanish Quarter. However, we didn't really know the regions and we yeah. were also told to stay away from the Spanish Quarter. So well, it was our first two days of uh, in Italy of the holiday. So it was a thing where you know we didn't a have bit a shell shocked of like what's going on culture wise and like trying to find our way. So like the second time we went to Naples was a lot smoother. Lots smoother. Yeah. Lot smoother. So um but our accommodation was absolutely amazing. Again you can find it in that guide. It was about 60 euro a night and we booked it through booking.com and there was a two course breakfast. The people who ran the Airbnb were, I think, some of the nicest, the nicest couple we've ever met. Yeah, their son was living in, no, living in London. Living in London. And, but yeah. they knew Ireland pretty well and they were just so nice. Yeah, for, like they brought you out a first course of like savoury food and like, you and know, sure, eggs. Tree, tree platters, and, oh. like everything. And then the omelet. next course was like dessert. It was yeah. Fresh cakes made that morning. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, a beautiful rooftop terrace and. The kind rooftop of canopy terrace. up there and everything and little shades and it was absolutely stunning for yeah it, like anyone going to naples this airbnb is a must a little mini fridge in the in the room as well and all the stuff in the apples. mini fridge was free yeah um which was class because obviously we got in late so there was no shops open um but yeah they couldn't have been more accommodating um i will say it's not very close to the beach and it's not very close to the spanish quarter but if you kind of wanted a bit more of a chill Naples holiday or if you just really want to go and walk around the city absolutely brilliant it's right beside the botanical gardens as well so you can pop in there yeah. um but cannot like it was what a good start um I also had to work the first two days that we were yeah. on the holiday so the rooftop terrace really came in handy um, um I just wandered the streets <laughs> around, <laughs> around the accommodation looking for bars and restaurants and there's obviously Naples is so big there's a restaurant and a cafe and a bar on every single street corner and they're all amazing in their own right yeah so the next category that we're going to talk about that leads us perfectly into the next category which is food oh lovely food lovely food so but for anyone obviously the biggest thing in, in naples would be neapolitan pizza That's and have we had ones. it nope <laughs> we have not because we in fairness people are gonna be like what the hell we went for the seafood, the seafood land, mm -hmm. anywhere on the coast. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Fresh that morning, every single morning, and it's just stunning. Naples um, also has a very famous wild boar pasta dish, which yeah. is amazing as well. And to be honest, the Neapolitan pizza, the more that we've researched pizza, because we're, we're pros at it at this stage, it's a very, very thick base. And that ain't my jam. So um, we were just having a little bit of a debate about the pizza there. Um, so in my experience, the Neapolitan pizza has had a very thick kind of crust and a base. And that ain't my jam kind of think Chicago town pizza. Uh, whereas uh, Cormac's had an experience where they're thin. So we've just been debating that for the last five minutes. Yeah, no, obviously <laughs> the different places have different styles of pizza. So there's always going to be different restaurants will have their the standout from the crowd basically yeah. so but our focus was definitely more on the on the seafood, the seafood and pasta. absolutely um so again we have a link to the trattoria that we went to in naples and we went back we would try to go back the second time but your friends had actually been there the night before yeah, yeah they randomly stumbled across it so it's but called um trattoria a pignata and the food was absolutely gorgeous we got a beautiful gnocchi and the classic um ragu neapolitan mm -hmm. pasta and they were absolutely stunning and cheap as chips cheap as chips yeah. absolutely cheap as chips um there's also yeah there's so many food alter like there's so many different types of food in naples and there's loads of indian there's loads of um pakistani food as well really mm. really cheap if you're on a budget and a lot of deep fried uh like arancini balls and the small like soupsy kind of specialty dishes that they do crostinis for a euro two euro portion when you're eating like sorry when you're drinking and eating in the little yeah Vino, Vino place they are great they always hand out the crisps as well if you're having a beer somewhere oh, so yes. 
<laughs> You're a snack, um, snacky man like myself. It's heaven. Yes. And so before we just transfer off food, we just wanted to say that um, Naples is one of the cheapest places to get alcohol or drink alcohol out in bars um, or even in restaurants. So you can you can get a pint or you can get a bottle of beer um, for about three euro or less for one yeah. of the big, big bottles. And the small three, 330 ml bottles are only 150 a, be- a beer. So they're incredible value. Just one last tip on the food as well is, um, do you want to explain the trattoria and osteria difference? Yeah, so trattorias are the classic um, cuisines. So that's where you'll get your all your pastas, your steaks. It'll have fish, but it's kind of your, your hearty Italian foods. You'll find a nice mix. Osterias are classically uh, fish restaurants. So you'll find like your sea bass, your trout. You'll have more of a selection on Sagatelli, seafood mixes, platters, and things like that. So the, it's just a small difference between like the trattorias basically are more meat based and the osterias are more fish based. That's as simple as I can put it. So moving on to fun, fun, mm. fun, fun. Um, I do want to touch on obviously when people go to Naples, they usually go to Pompeii. Yeah. We had tickets booked to go to Pompeii and then it ended up being 39 degrees. Which was when you just land there, a little bit too much. <laughs> a little bit too much. And also we might have gone to the Spanish quarter the night before and stayed out until half five in the morning. So <laughs> it's what you do. It's what you do in the Spanish quarter, in fairness. So we decided to skip Pompeii, see that we had six weeks of Italian culture and art venues to go to yeah. exactly <laughs> um but there are so many things to do in naples there's galleries everywhere there's museums everywhere and um, there's herculaneum which is like another uh, it's another town similar to pompeii um but actually in herculaneum you can there's there's less barriers and things like that so you can yeah. really kind of walk through the town um obviously you've got the giant volcano that's about to erupt at any minute so that puts a whole spin of fun on it um but yeah there's so many things to do in naples i will say if you're into the culture arts historical stuff yeah so there's a yeah you can rent uh if you have your license you can obviously rent a moped and that's highly recommended by a lot of a lot of different tourist agencies and places um to to see naples best and, and get best to the hilltop. of luck driving around naples yeah unless you're confident don't do it if you're sticking to the main roads and going up to like the castle and the hills and down to the beach and stuff, it's fine. But in the city center, it's just chaos. So Absolute be chaos. warned if you're not a if you're not a confident good driver, don't do it. Traffic lights are more of a suggestion than yes. so are helmets <laughs> apparently, and how many people you can put on a moped as well. And you can just carry a newborn child in your arms while you drive around with a four year old on the back. No yeah, and a, and a little dog on the platform where your legs go as well. Just you know, the whole family, the whole family on one moped. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, overall, I would say for culture arts, Naples is really good, but also party party central yeah. um the just stuff. looking to unwind and relax and have a load of beer and just enjoy the atmosphere of crazy streets where it's just people singing and dancing and screaming and it's just yeah. absolutely incredible the spanish quarter essentially is um a whole list of streets it's kind of on a grid um i'd say it's about 20 streets down and 10 streets across the main area and the whole place there's just bars wall to wall and everyone just goes outside on the streets just drinking from bar to bar you it, it's god i don't even know how to yeah. describe it it's no, like it, shop it's, street on steroids on paddy's day it's you know? crazy like we walked through a market one day in the morning and there was an old man with a huge bucket of ice with beers there doesn't seem to be a license in law. <laughs> no. There's no law against drinking on the streets as well. So you can just get a beer as you walk around. So everyone has beer. As I said, you can buy it off a random guy on the corner. So And you can smell the wacky tobacco all over the place as everywhere well. Everywhere in Naples. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely everywhere. And so our final category is value for money. Incredible value for money. Incredible value for money. Yeah, a lot like your main courses in the restaurants. 10 to 12 euro, depending on what you buy. Mm-hmm. Beers, as we said, 150, 2 euro, 3 euro for a big beer. So yeah, value for money is incredible, along with the taxi. So Naples is very cheap if you're looking for a budget travel from destination. That's just a mix of everything in terms of chaos, art, culture, and crack. Yeah. It's incredibly good value. And even, you know, the likes of, so we have a link also of where we booked our day trip to Pompeii, even though we didn't, but I spent ages researching the best value budget one. Um, so it was 29 euro 
per person for a whole um we went with the audio tour guide rather um than like an actual tour guide in person because we didn't want to follow kind of the crowd um so it was 29 euro and it was skip the line and all that please book your tickets in advance if you're going to go to anything cultural in italy because otherwise you could be standing in the queue forever <laughs> um yes. and yeah just again the train from train from naples to pompeii it's only about 20 minutes so yeah. Um, you can just hop on the train. Um, 66 euro a night for a hotel. It was 66 euro for the flight. And I mean, you couldn't spend money. You literally yeah. couldn't spend You'd money. You'd have to really try, lads. You'd have to really go to like the fanciest, fanciest restaurants. And I don't even know how you'll find them in Naples because they're all just really good, affordable, beautiful venues. Yes. So um, our overall experience of naples has been really excellent um we stopped through it once on our way back up to mm. rome once we left the Amalfi coast and then we've actually done a weekend trip after like once we've settled in florence as well yeah. so we feel like i would go to naples any weekend oh in a heartbeat in an absolute heartbeat yeah. any any time of the weekend so please friends book book holidays to naples we'll go come to naples. there <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on the spanish quarter <laughs> we're just going to round out the episode like we will for each of the cities um in the upcoming episodes and so i'm going to get you to give a score out of 10 for the following court monk hit me up transport say transport i would give a solid eight out of ten accommodation and that includes we didn't talk about our accommodation in our second stay um or like our weekend trip but essentially we just stayed um slightly closer to the beach near the spanish quarter it's very simple super cheap i think it was like 55 euro hotel room i can't um, i can't think of a reason not to give a 10 out of 10 because they're two of the easiest accommodations and the most value for money beautiful places we stayed and check in everything else so mm -hmm. yeah that gets top marks for me uh food food for definite uh i give it a solid eight out of ten we had one disappointing meal where the service was just a little bit chaotic um but other than that for the quality of food definitely nine out of ten ten out of ten for the seafood but overall service and i'd say solid eight mm -hmm. um fun all fun's 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. It's just, if you like just chaos and, you know, being in a city where no one gives a single F who you are or what you're doing, it's just very relaxing and liberating. Okay. And then final is value for money. Oh, well, that's, that's easy. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> is that another 10 out of 10? That's 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you giving really high scores for Naples? Yeah, no, I like, I would, I would love to be more, you know, balanced in the sense of 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10, but I can't. Naples was, I have to say, I know people have their doubts about it, but Fair. for me, it was absolutely incredible. Great. Um, so for me, transport, I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. Mm -hmm. Um, I found, you know, there were buses, there were trams, there were trains, there's taxis are cheap, rentable there's bikes, everything, yeah. literally everything that you could want. Um, the only reason I'm knocking one point off is because um, sometimes the transport on the roads are actually really, really frightening um, yes. because people are just it is terrible drivers. Yeah, yeah, right. People are amazing drivers, actually. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, for the accommodation, I am going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, we had our amazing first accommodation, but I was a little bit let down by the second accommodation that we stayed in just because the room was very small. And also it can be kind of hard to find accommodation near the beach or near the Spanish quarter. You kind of always seem a little bit outside of it. And again, as I was saying, just as a woman, I'd like to be in the center of where I want to be at nighttime. That's very fair, actually, yeah. Um, for me i just was like no the company would be great and don't mind walking or traveling but that is a very good point yeah for the food um overall i'm going to give it a seven um i had one or two disappointing meals there they were really like i mean obviously they were amazing when i first landed but now kind of now that we're looking back there was no meals that like stood out stood out that yeah. i was like this is incredible um but i know i can't wait to go back and try more food there um and again just some of the service and this will be an ongoing thing just some of the service um if you're a woman and even if you're paying the bill they will still only talk to the man yeah. so that gets a little bit frustrating and um, also some of the restaurants just say oh sorry we don't take card and then you have to go to an atm so just bring cash with you because even though it's illegal to not have a working card machine in italy so many places just only take out yeah. or take cash um 
for fun, I'm going to give it a solid 10 out of 10. There's so much to do. Oh, it's incredible. So much to see. Great for the set. Highly recommended for a girl's trip, boy's trip, pen, stag. Anything you want. Anything. Good crack. Like, do you know, if you're in a couple looking for a party weekend, perfect. So my overall value for money then, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. Um, You can obviously look at the menus, find your prices, all that. Super cheap. But I would just recommend asking for the prices in advance. Our first night when we landed, it was really late and we just decided to catch one drink before we went out. And um, the guy ripped us off. <laughs> it, it, it did yeah. say a much cheaper um, price on the menu, but the menus had been taken in at that point. Yeah. And so he ended up charging us an outlandish amount. I think he ended up charging us like seven euro or something for yeah, um, it was, it was like an Aperol spritz and three or four beers ended up being like twenty eight euro. Yeah, which was absolutely insane. But it was our you know we were straight off the plane fresh into the city dying for a beer so that's why I didn't knock a point off because it was just like fair enough we got ripped off because we did, didn't really care <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give me my beer <laughs> and so the overall score for Naples is 88 88 out of 100 88 percent um which is absolutely great it's great <laughs> yeah no well, well it deserved I know there are there were a few little blemishes but overall it was incredible city if you guys have any more questions about Naples, please feel free to shoot us a DM on Instagram or on TikTok. We'd Absolutely. be more than willing to help you out. And so, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you so much. We're Cormac and Jane. We hope you enjoyed our Naples episode and come back next time where we'll be talking about the next leg of our trip in the south of Italy, Salerno and Sorrento. If you like our podcast, then please subscribe and please give us a five star review. It's free and it just takes a couple of seconds. You can follow us on socials at Alt Living and you can download our Excel sheet with all of our accommodation, restaurant, transport, experience and budget details for our six week holiday on altliving.com. See you next week. Bye.